Who? Okay. I'm sorry. That wasn't very nice. That was pretty close to the microphone. So that was probably very loud. Uh, but I had to, I had to guys. It is Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Hope you're having a great start to the day. Uh, maybe you're listening to this as your kids are trick or treating and you got your AirPods in and you're doing your thing. They're doing theirs. And this is going to be a perfect episode for you if that is the case, because we're going to be going over a lot of tricks to handle all the treats that are about to be influxed in your home. Because, you know, if you're if your kids are anything like me or maybe maybe you don't have kids, but maybe you just still picked up the leftover Halloween candy from the store. You're going to do that tomorrow when it all goes on sale. I don't know, but I pretty much can guarantee everybody listening to this is going to find Halloween candy in their home one way or another. And we're going to talk about today how to handle that. Uh, but before we do, let's just let's have a little fun and chat about Halloween, because I haven't celebrated Halloween, I feel like, in probably three years. I was thinking about that the other day. Last year, we had a music festival that was right on Halloween weekend. I mean, Halloween was on a Wednesday, I think, last year. I don't know. I did not do anything besides the music festival. And then the year before that, I went to California on a road trip during like the day after Halloween, so didn't do anything. And then the year before that, I think I actually did. I was a UFC fighter. <laughs> uh, but I haven't dressed up in years. But I am going to dress up. We're celebrating this weekend, which I feel like the Halloween being on like a Wednesday or Thursday, it's just like, do you celebrate before? Do you celebrate after? But on Saturday, it's already going to be November. So there's a lot of debates, I feel like. But uh, I did go to a music festival. It's the same one we went to last year. We went this past weekend. Um and it was, it was Halloween themed. It's called Freaky Deaky. And it was Halloween themed. Uh, a lot of people wore costumes. I was kind of lame. I just wore like a typical like kind of rave outfit that was just spider webbed themed. It wasn't really a costume, but that was, that was my due diligence. I'm honestly, this is kind of going outside tangent, but I think, um, I think I might be retiring from the EDM music festival scene. Um, never say never. I do think, I mean, I still know I will go to some in my life, but I'm just, I feel like I'm a, I'm aging out of it. <laughs> um, they're a fun time. People are always surprised when they find out I, I like EDM and music festivals. Apparently, I don't come off as that kind of gal. But look, we all have layers, okay? I have layers to me. But anyway, that is what I did this weekend. And then we are going to celebrate. Some friends are having a Halloween party this weekend. I am planning to dress up as a margarita from a uh, local favorite here in Austin that's known for its um, – how should I put this? Dangerous margaritas. Uh, it's called Denada. And if you live in Austin, Texas or anywhere near here, you are in Austin, Texas at any point, you absolutely should visit Denada. I warn you to only have one, maybe two margaritas if you're feeling crazy because they are something. But I'm going to dress up as one. They're, they come in these like pink cups and it says Denada it's nothing on the cup. So I'm going to get, I got like the iron on letters. I got to still make it and everything. I don't own an iron. I guess that's like the millennial thing. I don't own an iron. I have a steamer, but I need to get an iron and do the iron on letters. But that's my plan. I'm going to make a tahine rim necklace. It's cute, okay? I thought it was creative. And everybody here will get it. So that's what I'm planning to be. But anyway, enough about me. Enough about the Halloween festivities. Let's get into what we're really here to talk about with how to handle the candy from the post-Halloween festivities. Okay, so we're going to do a quick little episode here uh, going over some of my top tricks to handle the treats, okay? Tricks for the treats, how to handle the Halloween candy haul that is undoubtedly going to be influxing your home, whether it's your kids bringing home a pillowcase of them, whether you are going to buy the on-sale heavily discounted bags of candy, which is probably going to be me uh, at the store tomorrow. Uh, I will be doing that and I will be mixing it into my Ninja Creamy. So let me just start off by saying I'm not about to tell you that you, like none of these rules are about to be like, throw it away, don't have the candy, restrict yourself from it. No, 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 no. You're going to probably be very surprised by rule number one, okay? Or trick number one. Um, but I start that off by saying like, I'm right there with you. I will be buying the Halloween candy. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that, uh, just going into this with some ground rules and I'm putting ground rules in air quotes, if you're not watching on YouTube, cause they're not really rules. Again, they're more like tricks, but going in with kind of a mindset of how you're going to approach something like this, I think is the best way to set yourself up for success. And obviously in this episode, we're talking in context of like Halloween candy, but I think the same approach can apply to anything as if, as in like going on a vacation and kind of setting some, 
self expectations of maybe how much alcohol you're going to consume or how many uh, desserts you're going to consume or um, just how you're going to approach a certain event, a birthday, a barbecue, or whatever. Like, again, not rules and not limits, but like, honestly, even kind of even the opposite of those, because I think what happens for a lot of people is they they try to set these rules or limits that are unrealistic. And then they're, of course, not going to follow them. And then they get very disappointed and down on themselves. And then they're like, because they're down on themselves, they're like, screw it. I already messed up. Like, I'm just going to go harder, you know, and they end up e- eating even more because of the guilt they feel. And and like, then they would have, if they just set more realistic standards, like I'm going to have two drinks, right? Instead of like zero, or I'm going to, uh, you know, only eat the salad at the barbecue. And then I'm like, of course you're not. Instead be like, I'm going to have like one serving and get whatever I want, but I'm not going to go back for seconds. Like set something more realistic, right? Like that. Right. So that's kind of the premise behind, uh, even this too is like, and whether you take these ones that I give you or set your own, like just set your own kind of tricks, tips, expectations for yourself about how you're going to approach something. Cause I guarantee like, especially if they're realistic, you're going to be more likely to stick to them and then more proud of yourself rather than like the same outcome, but then even feeling more guilty because it's, it's against what you said. Hopefully that makes sense, but let's go ahead and dive in here. So I've got five tips and we'll see if more come up as I talk, but five tricks, uh, to enjoy the treats without feeling like you're spiraling into a candy coma. Okay. So the first one, first one, and it's going to surprise a lot of you. And my first trick is just eat the candy, eat the candy. Yeah. Like don't restrict, don't tell yourself you're not going to eat the candy because you are going to eat the candy regardless. So again, don't set yourself up to be disappointed in yourself. Tell yourself, yeah, I'm going to enjoy the candy. Okay. Don't try to like hide it or feel bad about it. Don't try to restrict to zero. Okay. Cause that always ends up leading to just like overdoing it. Cause once you have one, you're down on yourself, you're disappointed, just like I explained, and you typically end up going crazy. So instead tell yourself, set like a realistic expectation. I'm going to have two pieces a day. I'm going to let myself have two pieces a day. Pick them, pick, pick, maybe pick the two you want, set them out, have the rest in like a, you know, a hiding spot or not, not a hiding spot. Cause obviously you know where they are, but out of sight, out of mind. Right. But tell yourself, like, allow yourself to have it. So super short and simple, like don't throw it all away. Don't try to like put it in the closet, but say you're not going to have it. Just tell yourself like, I'm going to have a couple of day and that's fine. All right. Number one, eat the candy. Uh, the second little trick here is I would say now within that, create a candy window. Okay. So essentially like make a designated time or like part of a meal or like after meal or whatever. Um, it doesn't need a time of day where you, maybe your kids, like that's when you get to have one or two pieces of candy. So maybe it's right after dinner. Maybe it's while having a movie. Maybe it's while like reading the bedtime story. Um, but set that, like tell yourself when you're going to do it. So that doesn't become like a mindless, Oh, I can just have it any time of the day. It's like, I have the candy during, you know, right after dinner from 6 to 7 p.m. or while we're doing X, Y, and Z. Or maybe it's something that like, maybe you guys can make it if you're a family, if you're if you're somebody with kids. Maybe it's something you guys make a little for the next like two weeks while there's candy. Make it a little like nightly bonding time. Like maybe you, your husband, your kids, like after dinner, you're all like, okay, let's go to the candy stash. Like what's every gonna, everybody going to pick? And like make it an event. Make it some time to spend together, right? Um, so I think just kind of creating that candy window when it's going to happen how it's going to happen. Uh, that keeps you accountable for when you're going to do it as well. So that's number two. Um, number three, and this is kind of, kind of similar because to me, this is when my window would be, but number three is I'd say always pair the candy with a balanced meal. And for me, my window would be right after dinner. Um, but regardless, I would say like, you know, always, if you're going to have some, like have it, right after or somewhere around a a meal when you're having protein, carbs, and fats. Because if you have already eaten whole foods, you're not going to be as hungry and you're likely going to be satisfied, which is that sweet ending to it, rather than just having it as a snack. Like it's really easy to like out of context with nothing else, with nothing else stabilizing your blood sugar, which is kind of mindlessly doing it in the middle of the day. It's really easy to just have like, all right, I'm gonna have one more. Okay. I'm gonna have one more. And before you know it, you had five pieces, right? Um, So make sure you're having a balanced meal around this. And again, I think that it creates a natural candy window in and of itself is like, and maybe, maybe you even say like, maybe for you, it's like, okay, after all 
you know, three meals, maybe not breakfast. I don't know. It's, I mean, I can't say I haven't had a piece of chocolate after breakfast, but maybe like lunch and dinner, you're like, I can have a little mini dessert. So maybe it's two pieces a day. You have it after lunch and dinner. Um, but I do think that, um, there is a lot to be said about having the other macronutrients, uh, around that, that does already stabilize blood sugar, already satiates you, creates less of a craving. And then that sweet treat is just like, I'm typically very satisfied after I have something savory. And then I have like one bite of something sweet. I'm good to go. So I, I think you'll find that if you do number three here, you're going to be totally fine after one. All right. So that's number three, pair your candy with a balanced meal. Number four, this is a little bit more about, or like starts more about your, maybe your kids, if you do have kids, but I do think applies to helping you, uh, not be savage with the candy either. And that's let them have their fun, but without turning it into a free for all. So let them have the candy, let them like, don't throw it away. Don't try to restrict them to it either. Cause I do think part of this also, you know, these are the little things where, and let me preface this with like, I am not a parent. I am not a kid. So I am not going to sit here and act like I know anything about parenting or the way that like we can influence, you know, our kids in childhood and things like that. But, you know, we do know obviously from studies and psychology that like a lot of these things that happen during childhood do stick with kids and do make an imprint on their life and the way that they look at things. And it can be little things like this that as adults, we think like, how would they ever remember that? How would that ever impact them? But they do. So anyway, all that to say, because what I was about to say is like, I think that the way that you approach Halloween candy and sweets and talk to them about this and talk to them about sugar and whether it's from a place of like more, hey, you can have this, but we want to make sure we're like having much more nutrient dense foods around this. And it's also really important to like feed ourselves vegetables and like talking about it in that way where it's not like a limit or, and it's not like a candy is bad, um, but it's just saying like, it's a treat and we need to make sure we're doing the other things is different than saying like, candy is bad. Don't have this. It'll make you fat. Like things like that, like that will stick with them. And those are the kind of things that can create more like disordered relationships with food later, or kind of have the opposite effect where it causes them to like be hiding it, stashing it in their room, binging on it, et cetera. So I would definitely, you know, be mindful of like how you approach conversation about this. And that's why I also think it's important to not just like tell them it's bad and really, really restrict it or hide it. Like let them have their fun with it. But again, even Factor them into the these tricks that you're setting for yourself. Have them pair it with a balanced meal. Create a candy window for them. Um, but the big thing that I was going to say here is, you know, I think that the part about without turning it into a free for all and using kind of these other tricks for them is that they're allowed to have it. But then besides that, you know, besides in their balanced meal or besides in their candy window, like it's out of sight and out of mind. It's, it's in the pantry in the back corner. It's like, again, you're not throwing it away. They know it's there, but it's not something that's at the forefront of all for all of you guys to see all day. It's not in a counter or a it's not in a container on the counter. I know a lot of people like to do that. They like to put the candy corn or they like to put the, you know, Reese's cups in the little glass jar on the counter. And it's so easy for you, for the kids, um, to just walk by that, you know, five times a day and just pop one out of it. And you don't think that those things are adding up because you have one candy corn, but you do that 10 times. Um, and that's already like 50 to hundred calories right there that you're just mindlessly having. So I would say like, let them have their fun. Let it be a part of their life for a few weeks. Let it be a part of your life for a few weeks, but don't keep it at the forefront and just don't keep like, don't turn it into a free for all and like, keep it out of sight, out of mind. So that's rule number four, have your fun, but don't turn it into a free for all. Um, and then my last trick is have fun and then move on. Okay. Like Halloween is not just about candy. It's about, uh, spending time together as a family, going trick or treating, dressing up in costumes, having a fun time, uh, meeting, you know, meeting your neighbors, doing maybe get togethers, all of these other things. It's not just about the sweets. So make sure you're focusing on those other things as well. Play up the other things, play them up with your friends, play them up with your kids, um, enjoy those other pieces. And then once it's over, like it's over. And obviously candy typically lingers for like a couple weeks. Maybe you can also, this is, this is an additional rule I just thought of. Um, you can maybe set an expiration date for the candy. So like, Hey, anything we don't finish in a month, maybe you don't even have to, maybe you throw it away. Maybe you don't throw it away or you put it in the freezer, but it's like, Hey, we're going to like have this out for a month. And then it's going to not really be like, maybe you do hide it after that point. And, and like, you can just kind of take it out as needed. Um, that was just a little side thing I thought of as far as the expiration date. But like, I think the biggest thing from just have fun and move on is like, enjoy it. And then do not dwell on it. Please don't sit there after it. Cause you know what? Even listening to all these tricks, you might still have a day where you end up overindulging one day. Do not beat yourself up about it. Move on. Okay. The next day is a new day. Go back to these 
rules and don't think about, go back to these tricks. I don't want to call them rules, but tricks. Don't think about how disappointed in yourself you are because that typically leads to you just having another day like that. Okay. So have fun. You had fun. You had fun with your kids. Move on. Okay. So those are my five rules. I keep calling them rules. I don't want to call them rules. Those are my five tricks, tricks for the treats. Um, no need to fear the candy coming into your household find the balance, have fun. Most importantly, make it a family affair. Um, think about how you're, you know, talking about it to your kids if you have kids, but don't make it a forbidden thing. Okay. Going back to trick number one, I would not make it a forbidden thing. I would highly recommend just like creating again, this mindset around it where you're realistic with yourself, decide a way that you want to approach it and that you want to approach it with your kids that feels good to you, that feels balanced, that doesn't feel restrictive, that feels doable, that meets your health goals, uh, and approach it that way. So quick episode for you guys. Um, I hope that you're able to listen to this in the next few days, um, before, you know, the candy does maybe get away from you, but enjoy it. Let me know if this was helpful. DM me what your favorite candy is. Um, I miss being able to trick or treat my favorite Actually, I'm going to tell you guys an kind of an embarrassing, like, fun fact about me. I love Milky Ways and Three Musketeers. Those were always my favorite as a kid, but I eat them so weirdly. I don't – I wouldn't eat them now like this, but when I was a kid, I would – pick off all the chocolate outside of it first. And so I would end up with just this like squishy nougat. It was so messy too when it was a Milky Way because then there's caramel in there too. Uh, but I would just have like the squishy nougat left and then I would eat that at the end. I don't know why I ate that one, um, but I still remember that to this day. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a great Halloween and good luck with all the treats. Use these tricks and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Bye.